So hello everyone. Let's get started with another topic. Now we are actually heading up towards morphology and geological history of different fossils, different phylums, their classes, orders, and etc. So let's first start with the phylum Mollusca. Now before starting with Mollusca, let me tell you one thing that when we talk about life, the life forms, they are basically divided into plant kingdom and animal kingdom. But here we are not considering this plant kingdom. Why? Because it comes under your paleobotany. But here we are actually concerned about the paleontology. That's why we'll be looking into the animal kingdom in detail. Fine? So when you talk about the animal kingdom, the different hierarchical arrangement can be seen here. At first, we have the phylums under the animal kingdom. Under the phylums, we have classes. In the classes, we have orders, then we have species, and then we have genus. All right. So when you talk about mollusca, mollusca is a phylum. All right. And under mollusca, we will be looking at different classes and orders. So when we talk about mollusca, the phylum mollusca is actually divided into several classes and these classes are cephalopods, lemlibranchia and gastropods. After this, we see that in cephalopods, we have different orders. First, we have nodularia, then we have ammonaria and then we have dibranchia. So, at first, we'll look at what are these molluscas. I mean, we don't have to look at their morphologies and all because we'll be looking at these uh, cephalopods, lamellibranchia, and gastropoda in detail. So just giving you a brief introduction, I mean, what is this mollusca? So the phylum mollusca is actually made up of the word molluscum, molluscum, which means soft-bodied. All right, and it includes soft-bodied, triploblastic, unsegmented, and coelomate invertebrate animals. All right, and they are mostly marine. Few are freshwater, brackish water, and landforms. So they are bottom dwellers and vagrant. A few of them burrow in sand or mud. So this is not very much important because we will be looking at these classes in detail. So let's first start with gastropods. When we talk about the gastropoda, it is made up of two words, gastros and poros. Gastros means stomach and poros means foot. So stomach and foot. Gastropoda means stomach plus foot. So this class is made up of the snails which have a shell into which the animal can generally withdraw and the slugs which are snails whose shells have been reduced to an internal fragment or completely lost in the course of evolution. Now these gastropods are among the few groups of animals to have become successful in all three major habitats means they can be found in ocean, they can be found in fresh waters and they can be found even in the lands. So what is distinct about these gastropods? They have a distinct head, they have one or two pairs of tentacles and they have eyes. Okay, so it's just brief introduction about the gastropods. The most important thing we have to study in gastropod is the morphology, the internal and external morphology of gastropods. Now coming to the external morphology of gastropods. See, I have here two diagrams and with this diagram, I'll be explaining you the various morphological aspects, the external morphological aspects and features of gastropods. Right now, no need to write anything, just have a look and try to understand all these things. In the next slide, I'll be giving you the definition of all these terms. Fine? Now, a gastropod shell, these are actually gastropod shells and these are also called as conch. Gastropod shell is also called as conch. So it is long canonical tube-like structure. See, it's a tube-like structure you'll be seeing here. I mean, the structure is somewhat like this. Okay, so it's actually a 
long canonical tube like structure it is closed at one end and it is open at one end here is an opening and from here it is closed okay have a look this is a long tube like structure it is open at this end and it is closed at this end so at first we'll be looking at see here the closed part this side is called the posterior side and the open side this side is called as the anterior side okay closed side here this is posterior the open side here this is anterior now we'll see what is this aperture so guys the open anterior side the open anterior end is known as the aperture okay so this small opening here is known as aperture look at here this is aperture fine and the closed posterior end is known as protoconch this posterior end is here and this closed end is known as protoconch okay fine now this tube is coiled spirally into a screw like structure see the, the, here it is a tube and it is you know coiled spirally into a tube like structure so these are tube like structures and they are like screws you have screws right a screw like structure and each coil see this each individual coil is known as whorl all right see this is whorl these these tube like small screw like structure so this individual tube is known as whorl okay now the shell is composed of many whorls as you can see here see 1 2 3 4 there are so many whorls are there okay and there is one last whorl in this whorl the animal resides you might have seen a snail okay you might have seen a snail this is a snail see maybe this is the uh, your shell and in this whorl the last whorl the animal resides okay here the animal resides of course the animal res the would be residing somewhere where you you might be having space so definitely here the animal won't be residing because it's closed from here so here the animal resides and this whorl is known as the last whorl where the animal resides so have a look this is the last whorl where the animal resides okay all the whorls except the last whorl consist the spire of the shell okay now see there are so many whorls and this is the last whorl where the animal reside okay so except the last whorl all the other whorls are together known as spire just have a look see this is the last whorl or you call it as body whorl also so apart from this the whole whorls i mean all the whorls together are known as spire getting it see this is the spire this is the spire and this is the spire all right now the terminal whorl of the spire forms the apex we have seen the last whorl where the animal resides is known as what body whorl or last whorl and the terminal whorl okay the terminal whorl of the spire see this is the spire its terminal whorl is this one and this is known as apex all right see this is known as apex getting it so the whorls are separated by a slight depression now now we have seen that there is a protoconch there is a gastropod shell so we have two sides where it is closed is known as posterior side where it is open is known as anterior side and we have seen there are several tube like structures tube like structures and these are called folds there is a last whorl where the animal resides which is also known as the body whorl apart from the body whorl all the other whorls consist the spire and the terminal whorl of spire is known as apex now we look at these all the whorls they are 
they are actually separated by slight depressions have a look these are the slight depressions see these are slight depressions and these are actually known as suture these slight depressions are known as suture have a look where is suture yeah see here it is suture this is known as suture all right now the body of wall is the largest and the part of its farthest from the apex is called as the base of the shell now guys see the body of the last wall is the largest okay where the animal actually lives and the part of it farthest from the apex see farthest from the apex see this is this is the last wall this is the apex so which part of this uh, last wall is farther farthest from the apex this part so this is known as the base this is not of much importance what are the important terms i'll be giving you the definitions in the next slide just for now try to understand the things okay so now see uh, as i have told you this gastropod shell there is actually a coiling found in them okay see there is a coiling in them here it is a coiling in them now the coiling can be of two types clockwise and anti clockwise all right so when the coiling is clockwise it is known as dextral and when it is anti clockwise it is known as what sinistral why it is known as this and how you will find out that it is clockwise or anti clockwise i'll be showing you in the next slide with the example also there is one thing see there is one thing known as the spiral angle what is the spiral angle so see like this is the protoconch this is the gastropod shell now the sides of spire what is spire this is spire this is spire okay now the sides of the spire they converge towards each other near the protoconch okay they converge like this is the side and this is the side okay so they are converging here okay now what happens the angle between the sides this angle just a second see the sides converge and this angle between the two sides is known as the spiral angle getting it so it is all about the external morphology of a gastropod shell which is also known as a conch all right now let's look at the definitions of each of the terms which i have explained you before so at first we have aperture what was aperture the open anterior end is known as the aperture the open side which i told you where the animal actually resides okay then protoconch the closed posterior end is known as protoconch so open end is known as aperture and the closed posterior end is known as protoconch hole the tube is coiled spirally into a screw like structure okay there it is you know it is spiraled and coiled and each coil is termed as a hole okay then the spire see uh, at first let's look at what is bod body wall body wall where the animal lives where the animal resides in the last wall of the shell that is known as the body wall so except the body wall all the other walls except the body wall they consist of the spire so all the walls except the last wall constitute the spire of the shell now what is apex the terminal hole of the spire forms the apex the terminal hole of the spire this forms the apex okay now suture so the holes are separated by a slight depression known as suture so there is these lines these depressions and these are known as suture now dextral and sinistral coiling so the when the clockwise coiling is there it is known as dextral now how you will identify the coiling is clockwise when the aperture the opening end of the shell it comes to the right hand side of the observer it is known as 
clockwise coiling which is called dextral and when the coiling is anti clockwise it means whenever you take it in your hand the shell in your hand you'll find that the aperture comes to your left side left side of your of the observer then it is called as sinistral okay so the example for dextral the clockwise coiling is murex it is the most common one but when you talk about sinistral the left side aperture this is actually very rare where you find anti clockwise coiling example is fisa let me show you the example see this is fisa what i told you this is sinistral why it is sinistral see when you will hold this uh, fisa in your hand you will find that the this where is the aperture this is the aperture the opening end okay so the aperture comes to the left side of the observer and this is a murex see the aperture where it comes at the right side of the observer so that's why this is dextral clockwise coiling and this is sinistral anti clockwise coiling all right now the last thing spiral angle the sides of spire converge towards each other so this is the spire the sides converge towards each other near the protoconch and the angle between the two sides is known as the spire angle all right so you may pause the video here and you can note down all these terms the definitions of all these terms and i hope at this stage you are clear with the external morphology of gastropods so in the next lecture we'll be looking at the internal morphology of gastropods thank you so much 